Kuala Lumpur versus Toronto. Today we're going to be talking about 10 specific topics comparing the two cities and at the end I'm going to tell you which city I think is better based on what we discussed. Let's start with climate and weather. So Kuala Lumpur boasts a rich tropical climate with the average temperature ranging from 27 degrees Celsius to 35 degrees Celsius. It is warm and pretty much sunny year round. So you're basically on a tropical vacation in the city. Sounds great to me. Whereas Toronto, you have a much more varied weather system. You have the four seasons, which I have to admit is quite beautiful. You have spring, winter, summer, autumn, and there are things that come with the change of seasons, like, you know, the cherry blossoms in the spring and the leaves falling and changing colors in the autumn. And these are very beautiful things, but you also get freezing temperatures in the winter that disrupt city life. Kuala Lumpur wins this one. Topic number two, cost of living. In Kuala Lumpur, the cost of living is dramatically less than the cost of living in Toronto. Toronto is becoming one of the most expensive cities in the world to live in, and it's really been a struggle to keep afloat here. In Kuala Lumpur, you have a lower cost of rent, a lower cost of electricity and water, a lower cost of public transportation, a lower cost of gas and fossil fuels in order to transport yourself to work. Food is cheaper. Eating out is cheaper, leisure is cheaper, entertainment is cheaper. Everything is much more affordable in Kuala Lumpur. Of course, you do have to pair cost of living with your earning potential. If you're earning locally, there is a higher earning potential in Toronto, but it's really hard to make a direct comparison between the two because the economies are very different and the costs of living are extremely different. So then you have to strip it down to basic day-to-day -day lifestyle. In Toronto, the average person cannot afford to eat out, cannot afford to do many leisurely activities. They basically have to stay home and watch Netflix, do nothing, save money in order to get by in life. Whereas in Kuala Lumpur, people can afford to eat out on a regular basis, go to the different street markets and the night markets. There are plenty of activities for people to participate in that either don't cost any money or have a very low cost associated with it. And people in general are out of the house and enjoying life in Kuala Lumpur. Whereas in Toronto, unless they have a very high income, they are stuck at home. So I have to say Kuala Lumpur wins this one as well. Point number three is cultural diversity. So this is an interesting one because Toronto and Kuala Lumpur are both notably very cultural diverse cities to live in. Toronto has immigrants pouring in from all over the world on a daily basis and has influences from east to west, north to south. And you could say the same about Kuala Lumpur. It is a very multicultural city where you see many languages spoken and you visually see the cultures represented in walking down the street in terms of attire and culture. So in terms of cultural diversity, there is quite a difference. In Toronto, what I see is immigrants come in and they're not really encouraged to express their own culture or their own religion. The culture in Toronto is that you're really meant to conform to the general norm of things or else you have a hard time finding employment, you have a hard time socially. There are exceptions to this rule and there are fringe communities generally outside the Toronto core where people have cultural neighborhoods However, generally in Toronto, people's religions aren't really embraced or respected. And when we talk about holidays, I think there's a huge difference that has to be noted because basically only Christian holidays are acknowledged in Canada. So you'll get Christmas off, you'll get Easter off, but all the other myriad of holidays are ignored. And a lot of times people are forced to work on their religious or cultural holidays or if they take off work, then they suffer a financial loss from that. Where if you look in Malaysia and Kuala Lumpur, you see a huge amount of cultural diversity. People outwardly express their cultures and the different cultures commingle peacefully. And it seems as though different cultural differences are encouraged and respected in Malaysia. And this is also shown by the federal government that acknowledges basically every religion's statutory holidays. It doesn't matter what your religious background is, your cultural background, where you're from, you're gonna get the day off in Malaysia and Kuala Lumpur because all religious holidays are celebrated and it's a really beautiful thing. 
Not only are they celebrated, the local businesses in Kuala Lumpur go all out. For instance, Christmas is very much a Western thing and a Christian thing, and that influence isn't huge in Kuala Lumpur. However, Christmas comes around, all the malls are decorated in Christmas fashion, and they do the same thing for every culture's religion and all the holidays. So I think that's incredibly beautiful and really fun as a citizen. Whereas in Toronto, there's this new neo-woke politicism where you try not to celebrate anything out of respect for everyone's culture. So you go out around Christmas and there's no Christmas decorations. No one's really celebrating. And that's the same for any holiday. Basically, nothing is celebrated. People barely get any time off. Whereas if you're in Kuala Lumpur, every holiday is celebrated. You get so much time off to enjoy and embrace other people's cultures. So I think that's amazing. And that is another point for Kuala Lumpur. Oh, the food scene. Oh my God. The food scene. I mean, Kuala Lumpur has the worst food in the world, right? I'm so naughty. I'm just kidding, obviously. Kuala Lumpur and Malaysia are known to have the best food in the world, especially when you compare it to Toronto. So a lot of people know Toronto to have foods from all over the world. However, what you're getting is the Kellogg's breakfast cereal version of every culture's food. And the food is really expensive. I've been working in the restaurant industry for over 10 years. And I've worked in several different types of restaurants, whether it be very casual to fine dining. And I have to tell you, at the end of the day, in Toronto, you're getting scraps. In Toronto, it costs so much to run a business, especially a restaurant. The profit margins are very low. And so owners do everything possible to cut costs in every way you can imagine. And this results in the cheapest and most underthought product that you could possibly consume. And it's very expensive in Toronto. Whereas in Kuala Lumpur, you could talk to any local and anyone who works at a restaurant. They have such a high degree of pride in their food. And you could look anywhere on the internet. People talk about how if you come and open a restaurant or a cafe or a, a food vendor in Kuala Lumpur and you don't focus on having the highest quality product, then you're going to close so fast. That is definitely not true for Toronto. I have worked at one restaurant in Toronto where I'd say the quality of the product is extremely high and I was really proud to work there. But nine out of 10 times, the food is quite frankly, horrible. Another weird thing about Toronto is we have a lot of locally grown produce and we end up exporting all of it to the United States and who knows where. And if you go to a grocery store in Toronto and you look at the labels, even though most fruits and vegetables we grow locally, like I could drive out to an apple orchard and buy apples, you're not getting local produce. You're getting produce that is imported from Europe and South America, which doesn't make any sense. And so these imported goods are obviously of such a lower quality. So it's this weird economic thing that's happening that affects the food market. Whereas in Kuala Lumpur, yes, you get a lot of imports, but you get a lot of fresh local food as well. And I don't know what you put in your food in Kuala Lumpur, but no matter what you're eating, it's guaranteed to taste amazing. It doesn't matter if you're having Mexican food, Chinese food, Italian food, French food, or local Malaysian cuisine or Indonesian cuisine. If it's cooked in Malaysia, it is going to be better. So this is an easy win for Kuala Lumpur. A okay, point number five, strategic locations for travel. This is huge, okay? I mean, if you just want to sit at home all day and stay local, that's fine. And in that case, here's a bonus point for Kuala Lumpur. Here's a bonus point for Kuala Lumpur because there's so much to do in Kuala Lumpur. You're going to have so much fun. Whereas in Toronto, there's virtually nothing to do. Okay, there's things to do, but everything is going to cost you a lot of money. If you go to the museum, it's going to cost you like $50, which is like almost 200 ringgit to put in perspective for people watching from Malaysia. It is very expensive to do common cultural things. Imagine being in Toronto and going to the Royal Ontario Museum and it only costs $7. That would be a game changer. I think a lot more people would go to it and a lot more people would participate in the culture. If you're not going to stay at home and stay in your local area your whole life, you're going to want to travel. And there is a huge difference. In Toronto, our airport has an abundance of taxes and issues that go along with it. And traveling anywhere from Toronto is extremely expensive. The flights are costly. It is more expensive to fly from Toronto to Calgary than it is to fly from like Buffalo, New York to somewhere in Europe. 
which is wild. I mean, the price could be double. It's at a weird place in the world where it's not very convenient to fly places. Even flying across our country is seven hours. If you want to fly to the United States, I mean, that's handy. But basically, if you're going to fly anywhere internationally outside of the U.S., you pretty much have to fly to the U.S. and fly out of the U.S. to get anywhere. Which also poses a lot of implications for citizens who are not holding a Canadian or American passport. I'm Canadian and I don't need a visa to get into the United States, but a lot of countries do. So it's not as simple as, oh, I'm going to fly from Toronto to New York City and out from New York City to somewhere else in the world because that won't be possible, which increases the cost of travel significantly because to fly directly from Toronto to Istanbul or Hong Kong, it is considerably more expensive. Toronto also doesn't fly directly to an abundance of global destinations. They're like I was illustrating before, you're always making connections in other cities. So it increases travel time, increases cost, and maybe causes travel reluctancy. Whereas if you're in Kuala Lumpur, you're at the center of Southeast Asia. Not only can you get to any country or any city in Asia from Kuala Lumpur in probably less than 100 Canadian dollars within hours, while having amazing cabin service and amazing food on your plane, that's a bonus. The food on Canadian and American flights is known to be garbage, like garbage. Not only can you travel to Southeast Asian countries very easily from Kuala Lumpur, you could travel globally very easily. It is cost effective and fast to get to Australia, to Europe, to the Middle East. So if you're flying out of Kuala Lumpur, not only is it going to take you less time, cost you less money, but you're going to be getting great customer service and eating amazing food. So Kuala Lumpur wins this one. We got point number six, public transportation. Oh my. Do we have to talk about the TTC on Toronto? We have something called the Toronto Transit Commission. The TTC is responsible for buses, the subway and streetcars. And let me tell you, this is something that has been devolving throughout time. As years go by, the TTC becomes more expensive and becomes less efficient. I'll give you a quick example where the part of town I live in, when I first moved here about three years ago, I could get door to door from my home to my work in 30 minutes. And now it takes almost 60 minutes for the same route. In fact, actually, I changed locations and I moved closer to the subway station and took a 10 minute walk off my commute. So even though I subtracted 10 minutes of walking from my commute, I more than doubled my commute time because the TTC has been notorious for lack of funding, lack of support from the government. And you're on that train and there's probably a 50% chance that you're gonna be stuck between stations, there's gonna be some issue and the train stops and you're gonna be late for work. The TTC is very unreliable. Um, it is very expensive to buy petrol in Canada and it's expensive to own a car and drive around and the traffic is really horrible. And if you want to take an Uber because you don't like taking public transit, Uber is like our version of Grab in Toronto, then it's gonna be really expensive. If you wanted to, suppose I tried to get to work, it would cost 30 Canadian dollars. So we're talking about like a 30 minute drive, okay? It costs around 30 Canadian dollars, which is like a hundred and like a hundred, 110 ringgit. Can you imagine a 30 minute drive for a hundred, 110 ringgit? Whereas if you're in Kuala Lumpur, they have a plethora of buses, the MRT, the LRT, which basically are like subways and they have monorail system. And it is very cost effective to get around the city. And it's pretty quick as well. And Traffic can get congested in Kuala Lumpur as well as a bustling city, but their road infrastructure is much more developed than Toronto. And there are many alternative routes to get around the metropolis. And trust me, I've been stuck in traffic in Kuala Lumpur and it is nothing like being stuck in traffic in Toronto. Also, if you decide you don't want to take public transit and you decide you want to take a grab in Kuala Lumpur, which is their version of Uber, Let's compare that same 30 minute drive we talked about earlier. That 30 minute drive is probably going to cost you 15 ringgit. Okay. That is less than $5 Canadian, um, probably like three or $4 Canadian. So that is a huge difference. You're running late, you're on the go, or maybe you're staying somewhere where it's not convenient to access public transit. I've actually usually just used Grab in Kuala Lumpur because 
for a local, it'll probably be a lot more expensive to use a Grab, but compared to what I'm used to paying for public transportation, using a Grab to go everywhere is the same as me paying for public transit in Toronto. So Kuala Lumpur wins. Point number seven is going to be shopping. Yeah. So what's shopping like in Toronto versus Kuala Lumpur? <laughs> Let me tell you, Kuala Lumpur is kind of known for their malls. Malaysians love their mega malls. And let me tell you, they are gorgeous. They have malls in Canada and I've kind of grown up hating them. I remember going to Kuala Lumpur for the first time and I was told about mall culture. And I remember saying, hey, I don't want to go to any malls. OK, I don't like malls. I want to stay outdoors. If we're going to go shopping, I prefer street markets and things like that. I don't want to go to a mall ever. Don't take me to a mall. Of course, in Kuala Lumpur, malls are almost unavoidable because they're gigantic and they're everywhere. And my mind just completely changed on malls. A mall could be a glorious and heavenly place if you're in Kuala Lumpur. So I don't know. The architects who design the malls in Toronto, they need to take a trip to Kuala Lumpur and see what's up because it's night and day, folks. Not only does Kuala Lumpur boast a plethora of luxury shopping opportunities, they have a plethora of everything. You could go out to Louis Vuitton and buy, you know, a costly shirt of very high quality. Or you could go to a store like Padini, which is a local clothing brand in Malaysia. And they have beautiful clothes, high quality for great prices. For example, I bought this in Padini in my last trip to Kuala Lumpur. This gorgeous shirt, I think was 45 ringgit. That's like $7 Canadian. Okay. And this is, what's it made of? It's 100% viscose. I don't know what that is, but it's soft. It's cool on the skin and it is beautiful. Something like this in Toronto, this would be like $80. Easy. So in Kuala Lumpur, it doesn't matter your budget. You're going to find something and you could find something of really high quality. And there's going to be a lot of options. You could spend your lifetime shopping in Kuala Lumpur. Whereas in Toronto, your options are quite limited. Yes, you do have your luxury brands in Toronto as well. And I feel those prices will be pretty comparable. For instance, I went to Lululemon here and I went to Lululemon Kuala Lumpur and the prices were pretty much the same. In fact, well, Lululemon's local to Canada, so it's actually cheaper to buy it here than in Kuala Lumpur, but just marginally. So when we're talking about luxury brands and imports, you're going to get similar prices in both countries. But when you talk about locally made products, you're not going to get a lot in Toronto. Granted, you can go to Chinatown and get some basic t-shirts for a great price. And there are thrift stores, but thrift stores are even extremely expensive in Toronto now where you could spend $30 Canadian, which is like almost a hundred ringgit on that shirt secondhand locally at a thrift store, which is really wild because the whole point of thrift shopping growing up was it was less expensive. It's almost the same price as buying new clothing now, and it's just become a trendy thing. There is a really cool store called Black Market in Toronto, and everything is $10, which is about maybe like 35 to 40 ringgit. And that's cool. They have hats, coats, shirts, pants. They have everything. Everything's $10. And that's actually super cool. But that is kind of like a one hit wonder in Toronto. Everything else is really expensive. And like I said, black market, that's just one store. And once you leave that, um, it's not about like walking down the street and there's a lot of shopping. You have to travel far to several different neighborhoods and maybe each neighborhood only boasts one or two stores for you to look at. And I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of interesting stores in Toronto, but you're going to be doing a lot of window shopping. I feel that you're going to have a higher probability of finding something you want in your price range in Kuala Lumpur. So Kuala Lumpur wins this one again. Point number eight is entrepreneurial opportunities. OK, I can't speak firsthand about entrepreneurial opportunities in Toronto versus Kuala Lumpur, but I can give some secondhand examples based on people I know who've started businesses. Of course, this topic is really nuanced, but I'm going to do the best to relay information that I've seen. So if you're going to start a business in Toronto, it is going to be extremely expensive. We're talking about brick and mortar businesses, physical storefront businesses. So for example, um, I know someone in Kuala Lumpur who started a daycare recently. So I'm going to use that as an example. So if I were to open a daycare in Toronto, it's probably going to cost me half a million dollars. Okay. Yeah. In terms of 
signing a, a one or two year lease in which you're probably gonna have to pay outright and then licensing fees and then, you know, creating the signage and the contractors coming in to renovate. It is really expensive in Toronto. If you're going to have somewhere downtown, you're probably paying 10 to $15,000 a month in rent for your storefront, for your daycare. And a daycare is going to need a lot of renovations and you're going to be spending over a hundred thousand dollars. So easily you could spend 250,000 to half a million Canadian opening a daycare locally in Toronto. So to put that in context, that's 1 million ringgit easily to open a daycare. Okay. Digest that for a second. Whereas I know someone who recently opened a daycare in Kuala Lumpur. So there's two business partners who opened it together and the cost between the two of them to open their daycare and get it running was just over 25,000 Canadian dollars. And this daycare had to do full renovations. They also had to have a contractor come in and literally build a whole new set of stairs and alter all these things for the fire and safety codes. Okay. Everything they needed, the signage, the branding, the licensing cost them 25,000 Canadian. You see the, the difference. There is a huge difference there. So I could totally respect that the incomes in the two different countries are different. And that 25,000 Canadian is a lot of money for the locals, but it doesn't, I'm <laughs> half a million dollars for a Toronto local is a lot more than what $25,000 is for a Kuala Lumpurian local. This person was able to get their business up and running in a few months and starting this business in Canada, in Toronto would take you almost a year and maybe halfway through the project, it wouldn't even happen and you'd go bankrupt. So in terms of entrepreneurial opportunities, when we're talking about brick and mortar storefronts, I'd say Kuala Lumpur is a clear win. Okay. Point number nine is natural attractions. Ooh, nature. Both Toronto and Kuala Lumpur have a lot of nature involved. Toronto is a green city for North America. I'll have to admit. And that was one of the things I loved about it the most until I went to Kuala Lumpur and realized that in comparison, it wasn't such a green city because Kuala Lumpur is situated in the middle of a rainforest and they've retained a lot of that rainforest within their city infrastructure. And it is beautiful. There's a lot of green space around Kuala Lumpur. And I'm not talking about like little parks with some trees and benches, like really gorgeous lush parks. For instance, there's a video I'm going to be making soon of me visiting a bird park, the world's largest outdoor bird park in Kuala Lumpur. And that was an incredible experience. And there are so many natural attractions within the city limits of Kuala Lumpur, like the Batu Caves, which I'm going to be making a video about. Um, your stones throw away from so many natural attractions, so many waterfalls, so many temples, so much wilderness, so much nature. Toronto, it's not the worst. Okay. So you have the Scarborough Bluffs in Toronto, which is really beautiful. You have High Park, which is a huge, huge city park, kind of on the outskirts of the city. And it's really gorgeous. I'm not going to lie. And there's a lot to do in High Park as well. And throughout the city, there's a lot of parks interspersed. You also have the Toronto Islands, which are pretty easy to access. You could take the public transit to the waterfront in about 45 minutes usually and then you could take a ferry across the Toronto Islands and the Toronto Islands are incredible I'm not gonna lie it's the best part about Toronto um, however you only have access to the Toronto Islands for a few months you know summer doesn't last long in Toronto and then the islands get crowded and it's a really popular attraction for locals it is the best part about Toronto um, but I feel like in Kuala Lumpur you have the access to these natural attractions all year round and they're gorgeous. I'd say for both cities, these natural attractions are pretty easily accessible and affordable to get to. So I'm going to reluctantly say it's a tie for this point. Obviously, I think you've noticed at this point, I'm biased towards Kuala Lumpur. I have not explored the natural attractions of Kuala Lumpur in abundance. I do plan to on my next trip, but I cannot honestly say from the bottom of my heart that well, I do know it's better, but I just need to give Toronto a point. So let's just you get, you have a tie, you have a tie for this one. And the last point, point 10, the friendliness of the locals. Kuala Lumpur is known for having very friendly locals who are inviting to foreigners and to travelers. If you watch travel vlogs or read articles, Kuala Lumpur is known to be really embracing to visitors 
and to be willing to share their cultural vision and educate people who are visiting the city. You go to Toronto, however, it's kind of like you get what you get. I'm not saying Torontonians are rude, but they just don't really like care about anything. I think it's because of the fast pace of the work life in Toronto and everything's so expensive and people don't really have time for themselves, let alone anyone else. So you're not going to get that type of friendliness in Toronto. I in particular am quite friendly and I do work in the public. So people come up and visit it from different places around the world and they tell me Toronto so friendly. I'm so friendly. I don't think this is our culture here. It's just like how I was raised. So points for my mom. People in Kuala Lumpur I've noticed are generally just more happy and more authentic. Whereas I feel in Toronto, there's more of a facade and people are just polite because being polite is part of Canadian culture. So we're going to have to give this point to Kuala Lumpur folks. So Toronto scored one out of 10 and Kuala Lumpur scored a stunning 10 out of 10. Go visit Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, truly Asia.